Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Daniel and in this video I'm gonna tell you the 10 most important tricks for making your sea trout fishing in uh, in the rivers as optimal as possible. So here goes, here are 10 my top 10 uh, tips to making your uh, sea trout fishing the best possible. Tip number one. Uh, tip number one is uh, in regards to flies. Uh, when you're fishing uh, the, the streams here for, for sea trout, the flies uh, is really, really important. The first flies, the type, first type of fly I wanna, wanna really uh, uh, draw attention to is, is these. These are the foam beetles, uh, and that it's just magnificent and spectacular to fish with these. We have done a lot of videos uh, uh, where we show exactly how to use these as well, so check those out on the YouTube channel. Um, they fish well, there are surface action, uh, there's, there's just a lot of fun with these, and these are probably the flies that I fish the most with here in the summertime and that produced the most fish for me because of course I fish them so much. The next thing is, uh, is, is a small but very heavy fly that, uh, that, that really um, complements the, uh, the foam beetles very well. This fish is really deep, very fast, so I use this in all the spots where the foam fly doesn't uh, always produce a fish. In the really deep curves and bends of the river, I fish these downstream and twitch them, uh, uh, um, slowly retrieve them. Um, and, and this fish is really deep and it has caught me so many sea trouts, this one. This is called the Francis Easy and is a spectacularly great pattern because it fishes so deep and so well. Along the same lines is this one. This is the uh, the, the tilda, um, which basically is, is a very small, very inconspicuous looking pattern, but it just has a magic attraction to, to sea trout and in salmon uh, in particular. So in the summertime fishing, in the daytime, these smaller flies, this is a bit, this is not as, as flamboyant and as, as, as provocative as, as the French Easy. This is a bit more subtle, but, uh, but it's still really, really deadly. And sometimes subtle is the way to go. Those are the flies I use primarily during the daytime. As soon as, uh, as, as it's, it's nighttime, often I fish a stretch of water upstream with the foam beetle and, uh, and, uh, and of course with some of the heavier flies if, if the foam beetle doesn't work in that particular place. And then, uh, then on the way back to the car I fish these. These are uh, MV disc flies, which are basically flies with some rubber legs and, uh, and, uh, and a, small, a small, very thin body. Um, it's very important that the tube is almost as long as, as, the, as the wing here because the sea trouts like to, to basically to, to just nipple at the end here. So it's important to have a fairly lo long uh, tube for, for flies of this type. These are wake flies, which means that uh, when you fish these they will make kind of a wake on the water and that's how they are ideally fished. They should produce a wake on the water, not, not break the surface but just produce a, a kind of a... a yeah, a, a, so, so they, they, they make a wake when they swing across the across the river. These are really, really awesome in different sizes. I like the chartreuse one and the orange one, but basically they're uh, fished during the night time, so I don't think the color is that important. It's important though to have them in different sizes. Um, here is, is two different ones and I have some even smaller ones as well um, in the box always. And finally, it's important when you're fishing for a Danish sea trout to have something really, really big. Something like this. This is called the broom because it basically just uh, <laughs> brooms all the no, how do you say? Sweeps all the the sea trout from the river. Um, but something really, really big like this, or like uh, the support, or something uh, along those lines, is 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 important to have for the really, really na dark nights. If you're fishing baile or calling or cow or something like that, then a big, big fly, a big bulky fly, um, is is sometimes the best medicine for the really, especially for the really big sea trout. It could be a big sunray shadow as well, but, but something big as well. Um, those are, I would say, the five types of flies that I, I use the most that has, the, the, that, that has proven, uh, proven to me to be, proven to be um, the ideal flies for my, uh, my uh, fishing. And it's flies that I would never leave, the, uh, leave home without uh, in a fly box for the, for, the, for the summer fishing for the sea trout. So that was tip one, use the right flies. The second tip is keep a low profile. Try as much as possible to, uh, to make sure that the trout do not see you before it sees your fly. So basically use your surroundings, use brushes and, uh, and, and whatever you can in order to make sure that the trout do not see you before it sees your fly. It's summer, the water is often clear, you're fishing in the daytime with the foam beetle um, and that is one of the most crucial things at all. Make sure to stay as low as possible and make sure the fish sees your fly before it sees you. 
that's a really, really, really important thing to keep in mind whenever you fish these rivers in the summer. Det kan godt være en lille havre af det der. Hva? Så var det det. Ja. Nej, den var ikke stor. Det er oppe bakke at kaste ind den vind der. Det havde satme været umuligt, hvis ikke det havde været med den line her. Tip number number three, not four, but three. Um, when choosing your equipment for fishing these rivers, um, it's it's one of the things that I find has helped me the most is to choose a slightly longer rod than for what I use, for instance, for uh, the coast fishing. So I have a 10 feet rod that is my go-to and my favorite rod because basically it gives you a bit more reach. It's easier to mend the line. It's easier to clear your back cast from all the shrubs and weeds, um, and it's also easier for you to reach out side into the river. So I, uh, the, the ideal rod is 10 feet. If what you have is a 9 feet, then of course that is what you use. But I would say that the ideal length, at least in my experience and my, in my fishing, is a 10, way, uh, is a 10 feet. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, the size of the rod depends on or the, uh, the the class of the rod depends on uh, on the on the water that you fish if you know that you're primarily going to fish really really big flies into the night then perhaps a seven weight is is the is the optimal way to go if you're fishing small streams like this and primarily with the foam beetles then a four weight or a five weight is is, is ideal um, and that of that, that of course depends on the size of the flies that you actually intend to use uh, in regards to the fly line then I've I have um, I found a new favorite fly line, and this is the Rio Dad, which is basically a very short uh, line that I um, was uh, involved in uh, in in making, uh, uh, given it, 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 it the specs that it has. It's 7.1 meters long. It has a fairly steep tapering, so it it delivers the fly um, uh, very easily and uh, and is is excellent for shorter casts, um, uh, and it's also very strong in wind. So for for fishing like this, where you make an insane amount of casts all day you're just casting retrieving two meters casting retrieving two meters then the real dad is perfect the perfect choice it's also the perfect choice for bigger larger flies uh, for vile or cow for instance so my my strongest recommendation for the fishing here is the new dad um real dad v2 perfect for this get a 10 feet rod or or use the nine feet if, if, if that's what you have but the 10 feet is really really awesome Stefan, så nu kommer vi til der, hvor vi skal have den. Sikre vi os lige, at vi ikke skræmmer noget på vejen op. Er du klar? Okay, godt. Den kommer nu, hvis jeg rammer rigtigt. Det gjorde jeg ikke. Nej. Så er det dårligt kastet der også. Det er gerne derovre med vinden, var. Men det er ikke der, den skal over. Vi skal have fisken. Det der var lidt bedre, men ikke helt godt nok. Der. Tak. 
Oj, det er en god fisk også. Det er en god fisk. <laughs> Fuck, det så fedt ud, mand. Sådan der. Fuck, det var et fedt tæk. Woohoo! Åh, oh, det var nice, mand. Jeg vidste, den var der. Jeg går ud i vandet og tager den. Woohoo! Perfekt! Fuldstændig eventyrligt. Fantastisk. Lige præcis der, hvor den skulle komme, der kom den. På skumbilden. Ah. Very, very, very... Ah, hvor nice, man. En flot fisk, den her, Stefan. Der. Der skulle måske lige være 20 cm længere frem, hvis nu man skal ønske, men der er slet burde på. <laughs> Stefan, det var ikke en vilje. Jeg er nødt til at trække lidt igennem her, for at få den der tvunget den derop. Jo. <laughs> og skal vi lige gå op og skræmme den så? When fishing these rivers, there is a lot of weeds and stuff, so it's important to keep a control of the fish. As you saw with the fish I just caught, um, one of the most essential things that I always bring with me is, is my, uh, my landing net. Uh, I have this from McLean that has a, a weight system as well. Um, that's not strictly necessary, but to have a good, uh, good net is important. It just makes everything so much easier, and it's also a lot easier if you decide to either keep the fish or to release it, to basically have the full control of the fish to take a small sna a fast snapshot if that's what you like or just to remove the hook and release the fish fast so a net is is ideal it's perfect and I would never leave home without it I like to carry my net in this um, fish pond uh, vest where it basically there is a scabbard for it here and the back which makes this really really easy to uh, to carry you can get some of these scabbards as well from sims where you basically attach them to a wading belt and stuff but a scabbard for your net is is very very nice as well So remember your net. Um, I prefer the rubber ones, the ones that has the the the, the rubber bag because it's it's the most uh, it's 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 the one that is best for the fish. Um, and Maglean makes some awesome awesome ones. So tip number four is if you plan to fish some of this uh, during the night, which is basically a lot of uh, a lot of the really really good fishing here is uh, for these sea trouts are, are done in, in, in at night. Um, then make sure that you know the water and you have fished the water and walk the water in the daylight already because there can be a lot of bugs a lot of a lot of different you know uh, swamps and stuff and uh, and if you know the stretch of water you're gonna fish and have tried to you know walking it in the daylight you'll be much more sure-footed and uh, and and be much more safe when you when you're actually gonna fish it into the night so take care to learn the water uh, to get to know the water that you plan to fish during the night time while it's still light out Så er det nu. Den var så stor den der. Den var? Ja, det var den. Den skal lige have 5 minutters pause. So we just had a fish uh, almost take the fly, but kind of decide not to in the last second. So uh, basically just settle down, wait for 5 minutes and then cast again. Perhaps change the color of the fly. Ideally change to a smaller fly since it, it almost took but refused it a bit. But I don't have any smaller foam, uh, foam beetles uh, right now. So basically we're just gonna wait 5 minutes and see if it, uh, if it, it will grab the fly this time. Kommer den sgu ikke mere.
It's been a long day on the water and we forgot tip number three. So here goes. Tip number three is um, when you're on the water, take care to notice your surroundings and noticing, uh, notice other people fishing. And always ask before you actually start your fishing. If you can see another guy in the distance, then ask him if it's okay that you start your fishing where you start. Um, and basically, of course, give other fishermen a lot of room. Uh, show some respect and, uh, and also, also just uh, common uh, courtesy. Um, that will go a long way uh, also when you meet up with the meet the fisherman later on that he perhaps will share with you some specific pattern that is has worked really well or or a spot where a fish is holding and stuff so so take care and be be kind be respectful and uh, and <laughs> the universe will pay you back <laughs> so basically tip number three three um, yeah be friendly enjoy the fishing and enjoy it with other fishermen as well. Tip number seven. If possible, then optimize your time of fishing. I mean, go fishing as much as possible, of course. I, I try to do that. But there are times where your chances of catching a sea trout is a lot bigger. Periods of, uh, of rain always makes the river rise and when the water levels in the river rise then that will bring a lot of sea trout from the, uh, from the sea into the rivers but it will also make the sea trout that are already in the river move around. And fish that are, you know, basically have been, have been uh, disturbed and move around in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the river are much much easier to catch than fish who has been standing at the same spot for maybe a week or so or, or even longer. So. Whenever the water levels rise due to rain, then that is the perfect time to go fishing for sea trout. Um, the eighth <laughs> trick I want to tell you about is uh, actually uh, something I'm wearing. This is a Sims box stopper uh, hoodie. Um, they have shirts as well in, in this material and basically this material uh, protects you from, uh, from all the mosquitoes and every bugs that, that bite and stings. Um, so um, I always, always, always use these during the summertime because in the evening when the sea trout starts uh, really um, being active, so does the mosquitoes. So trick number nine is, no eight, Trick number eight is, wear something that helps you be protected against the bugs. Tip number nine, I love this summer fishing for sea trout and uh, occasionally I also, also very much like to eat a fish. So today we caught this nice sea trout on the foam beetle and I killed this fish because it has the ideal size for me to eat. Um, and, uh, and I would much rather kill a fish in this size, which is not a trophy fish, but it's a fish that is the ideal size for me and my family to eat, um, and then spare all the really, really big ones. There is not as many big ones as there are smaller ones, <laughs> of course. And, and the trophy fish are really, really important for the spawning and for keeping up uh, healthy levels of stock of fish in the, in the waters. So what I tend to do is, uh, I like to release a lot of fish and I release a lot of fish, but I also like to occasionally kill a fish and to eat a fish. So today I decided to kill this one, to eat this one with my kids. Um, and if I hook into a really, really big one, I'm going to release that one because the trophy fish are just immensely, immensely valuable on, um, um, for, for, for uh, ensuring the fishing in the years to come. So tip number nine is limit your kill. Think about what fish you actually, uh, you're actually bringing home, if you're bringing home any. Um, and, uh, and also a fish in this size is the perfect, has the perfect, perfect taste. The bigger ones are not as, as good as these are, so limit your kill, think about what fish you want to kill, and then uh, act accordingly. Her er enormt svært, fordi hvis, vi, uh, hvis der kommer en fisk op og tager, så er det typisk, hvor vi bare hører det. Det derovre, fra. Men det vil typisk ikke være derfra mere. Det er typisk herinde, langs egen. Se, der var noget, der tog den, men ikke ret stort. Tror jeg. Åh, oh, 
jeg kan godt høre det der monsterplask. I find that on certain spots where I've had a lot of fish uh, actually take the fly, uh, sometimes I use quite a lot of casts on that spot. And I have experienced, I don't know why, but on some of the really good spots that maybe uh, I've used maybe 20 casts and then in the 20th cast the, the fish takes the fly. So um, sometimes if it's a spot that I really, really like and know really often holds a fish, I, I use many casts on, on that particular spot. Um, because maybe the, there's some weed that covers the head of the fish or um, whatever, or if, if it's really deep like here, then perhaps the fish does not see the fly until maybe the 20th cast or so. But that is at least what I've experienced. The places where I've had the biggest and the, and, and the most fish, I tend to cast quite a lot of times. And, uh, and sometimes it really takes a lot of casts in order for, for the fish to actually notice the fly and, and decide to strike it. Jeg har kun ramt mange træer det sidste. Jeg fik ikke fluen. Sådan kan det gå. Okay. Ja. Ved du, hvor man kan købe nye fluer han? Jeg har hørt noget om, at de faktisk har sådan nogle skumbiler med øje under øh, inde på det der Just One More Cast. <laughs> det hedder det så bare ikke. <laughs> the tenth and last tip of the day is go explore. Go out there in the summer night and get some fishing done. Try new stuff, try new patterns, try new flies, and try new water. Go out there and uh, just give it your best, because it's out here um, that the, the big experiences and, and, the, and the, the great, great, um, the great, great moments are. So grab your rod and go fishing. Go fishing in new waters, go fishing in old water, but just go fishing, because it's only summer once a year. And it's a magical time, and there are magical mo moments out there for you to, to find. So go find some. <laughs> That's it for today. Um, as always, you can find every single item used in this video uh, at our web shop. It's called NordicAnglers.com. Um, and basically, we have everything that I think you could ever possibly wish for uh, in relation to fly fishing. So swing by Nordic Anglers. Thank you for watching, and good luck out on the water.